What's up everybody? Welcome back to the CO Pilot channel. Mike here back in the hangar with you for another maintenance video. Today we're going to be changing the oil on my 1962 Cessna 182. In theory, it's essentially the same as changing the oil in a normal passenger vehicle, but in practice uh, it's a little bit more involved and I'll walk you guys through that. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to do a couple other small maintenance items. So first things first, uh, we're going to pull the cowling off. I've already taken the plane up, uh, done a couple laps in the pattern just to warm the engine up, get it up to operating temp. So without further ado, we'll get right into it. So I've got a quick drain oil plug on the bottom of the sump. If you look right there. So what that quick drain allows you to do is put a piece of 3 8 tubing on there. You push in on the fitting and give it a quarter turn and then all your oil flows down into your collection bucket here. So as opposed to pulling a traditional drain plug and making a giant mess. With this quick drain you can make a little mess, slightly more targeted. So I got sample pulled, oil drain plug is open and just slowly draining out whatever's left in there. Here you can see where the oil filter sits. It's not terribly easy to get to, I had to move some scat tubing out of the way. What I was gonna show you is a little trick to get your oil filter out of here without making a huge mess. So first thing you do is cut that safety wire off. So what I've done is I've taken a, an old oil bottle and I basically just cut it in half, left a little lip around all the edges. Throw a couple paper towels in there. And then I'm just gonna work that up behind. Okay, so I've got that old bottle seated up all the way underneath the oil filter. So now when I unthread it and remove it, hopefully we minimize anything that drips down into the engine compartment. And I don't know who decided to put the loop for the safety wire on the back side of this plate where the oil filter mounts, but it is incredibly difficult to get to. Now to get a nice fresh new piece of this back behind that plate. Wish me luck. This is potentially your best friend in the world when it comes to this task. A little mirror with a light on it. If you look in that mirror, you can just barely see two tiny little holes that I have to try and fish that safety wire in and behind. If you've got small kids at home, this is where you want to turn the volume down. You guys might be my good luck charm. I specifically bought this little mirror for this the last time I changed my oil and it was worth every penny just now. First try. Yeah, baby. All right, guys, not gonna lie. It's never gone that smoothly for me. If that's what you wanna call that, I will chalk that up to a win. All right, so I've got a new Tempest oil filter ready to go in. Date, tack time, all that stuff written on it for next time. Uh, depending on what type of oil filter you use, some of them recommend that you uh, pre-lube the rubber gasket uh, with some engine oil. Um, some of them recommend that, and then others specifically say 
uh, not to use it. On these Tempest filters, it specifically says, install filter clean and dry, do not use lubricant. And with these Tempest filters, they recommend you go hand tight and then about 18 foot pounds of torque. Okay, so we've torqued our filter to spec. Now we're gonna safety wire it. I'm not gonna give you a real in-depth explanation as to how to safety wire in this video. There are lots of great videos out there with people that are much better at it than me. But essentially, you wanna run this wire in a manner that will prevent it, the filter, from spinning off to the, the left. So while we're down here, this is also a great time to go down the belly and scrub away all the oil and exhaust residue. Let's see if you can see this. If you keep up on it, it comes off relatively easy. But it does take some elbow grease. We've got from the cowl flaps almost to the mains and we have all that way to go still. I'm gonna get my pump today. So with the quick drain closed, the new filter uh, reinstalled, everything else is more or less buttoned up. Time to add the new oil. Capacity on this plane is actually 12 quarts. Um, I'm only gonna add 10. Anything over about nine quarts on the dipstick ends up just blowing out all over the belly. Um, so since we did change the filter, I'm gonna add an extra quart. So 10 quarts should put us about nine quarts on the dipstick, which should be perfect. I generally use Aeroshell W100, uh, which is a little misleading. It's actually a 50 weight oil. This tends to have um, kind of the widest or the best uh, operating temperature range for the flying that I do here in Colorado. This stuff is running about $10 a quart right now, so we wanna make sure we're being careful and not spilling any of it. Liquid gold right here. All right guys, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut open our old oil filter. Been letting this rest upside down just to drain out any residual oil. And you can actually do this um, with some tin snips if you just cut along the rim. But I actually have a tool specifically for this. You basically just slide that guy on there like that. Give it a little spin. So basically we're just gonna go pleat by pleat and look for any metal. All right, that looks like a real clean filter, so I'm happy with that.
So the other thing we're gonna do while we've got the top cowling off is we're gonna pull all the top spark plugs and we're gonna bore scope the cylinders. Uh, we're gonna look at the condition of the piston head itself and then we're gonna see if we can visualize um, the exhaust valve and the intake valve and just make sure that those uh, all look to be in good working order. can see that but so I pulled the top spark plug out of each cylinder uh, to clean and inspect them basically what we're looking for is we're looking at the electrode itself we want to make sure that that has a nice round shape is not overly worn as these wear out they tend to get more oblong and football shaped once these electrodes are basically half their original size uh, they're considered worn out and need to be replaced. So in addition to the electrode being worn out, we want to look for any kind of fouling, whether it's carbon fouling or oil fouling. And another thing we're looking for is lead deposits that tend to accumulate down inside of them. And I'll be able to get a good look at the bottom spark plug as we bore scope each cylinder. Usually if I had the bottom cowling pulled off, I would go ahead and I would pull the bottom spark plugs as well and rotate them from top to bottom. But we're not gonna pull the bottom cowling today. So if anything looks to be of concern, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pull them off the bottom side. But this at least gives me the opportunity to visually inspect both the top and bottoms, clean the top. When we reinstall these spark plugs, we're gonna make sure we use a nice new copper washer and then we'll torque those down to the manufacturer torque specs. And we've got a little bore scope going into the spark plug hole here and this allows us to visually inspect our cylinder heads, piston heads, just to get an idea of the condition of them. Good practice. When you change your oil, go ahead and pull those plugs, take a look inside, see what's going on. All right, so we're gonna torque the spark plug. Manufacturer recommendation. And then you also need to torque these lead B nuts as well. That's what holds the ignition wire onto the spark plug itself. These are a much lower torque setting, but if you don't torque them, they tend to come loose. All right guys, so just to recap, ran the plane, warmed it up, brought it back in, drained all the oil, pulled the old oil filter, uh, we drain that oil filter and then cut it open, check for any uh, metal, basically. Uh, we pulled the top spark plugs off of each cylinder. We cleaned and inspected those while those were out. We bore scoped each cylinder, checked the exhaust valves, checked the condition of the piston itself, and visualized the lower spark plugs. With the cowling off, I try to clean and inspect everything I can possibly reach. Um, I've gone through and double checked everything that I touched uh, throughout this process um, and inspected everything else along the way. I think I forgot to mention kind of my oil change interval uh, right now is every 50 hours or six months. Um, this one happens to fall uh, on both of those. So I'm right at 50 hours of flight time and uh, six months since my annual inspection, which we changed the oil at that time as well. All right, guys, tools brought away, plane is clean, cleaned out the hangar. I'm gonna kick my feet up for a minute, flip through this Cessna flyer, stare at the airplane. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.